does life just happen? In other words, whatever comes my way, just accept it, live with it, get on with it, and so on. My title today is, How Does the Devil Attack Us? Most Christians are completely unaware that we are in a spiritual war with the devil. Too busy in the survival mode, and they think, they agree with what I said at the beginning. Life just happens. When bad things like sickness, lack, accidents, etc. come their way, they're so plugged into the world and its way of thinking, from the television, from social media, they just put it down to bad luck or bad genes. But when you walk with God, he will amaze you with his split second timing on how you just missed that accident or how you met a person that changed your life. And it was seconds, if you'd have just been there a second later, you'd have missed them or whatever. Daily, I experience the truths of Psalm 31, 15. My times are in his hands. And Psalm 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered and directed by the Lord. This knowledge that God is in control of us and that uh, he keeps us safe, and he organises my day, organises my time. This knowledge should give us great security. We should live in great security knowing this. And Psalm 91 says this in verse 1, We dwell in the secret place of the Most High. However, the devil looks for weak spots in our lives, weak spots in our soul, damaged areas caused by early life trauma, or even active curses that are coming down through the bloodline to us. It will be wise, therefore, for us to be aware of how these entrance doors affect our spiritual lives. My title, of course, is How Does the Devil Attack Us? He attacks us through entrance doors. In Genesis, Cain was angry. He'd made a sacrifice to the Lord. He was angry, sad, depressed and dejected of how his brother Abel's sacrifice had been accepted by God, but his wasn't. So God informed him that this was dangerous, dangerous to have such emotions. They were sinful, Genesis 4 verse 6. And because of these sinful thoughts, God warned him. He said, sin crouches at the door. Genesis 4, 7. We all know that Cain ignored this warning and let sin take hold of him and he killed his brother. He killed Abel. He had opened the door to sin by giving the devil access to his anger and jealousy and he ended up in the first recorded murder in the human race. In more common language, Cain had made a bad choice. In a similar way, uh, Peter wrote, in 1 Peter 5, 8, he wrote, be, be vigilant because the devil, like a roaring lion, he crouches down, waiting for our emotional doors to swing open and take advantage of us. And then when we are taken advantage of and we make a bad choice, the wages of sin is death. And that's Romans 6, verse 23. Think back to the time he first heard the gospel. It's more than likely that the preacher used a verse connected to a door. In Revelation, Jesus said in Revelation 3.20, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him. I heard a preacher in October 1962, 40 years ago, October 62 is 40 years ago, and he said, come forward and receive Christ as your saviour. And I went forward in this lovely church in Durham in England and prayed a prayer and Christ's spirit came into my heart and I was born again. You see, we know about doors. We need to open them to Christ and his Holy Spirit and keep them well closed to block the devil's attempts to prompt us to sin. Doors represent the choices that are presented to us in life. We have the chance to do this and we have the chance to do that. Well, they're chances and we're given choices to take 
which choice we want. We've got a will. And being aware that such doors exist, we need to be vigilant about what temptations there are out in the world. They want to kill, steal and destroy us. That's the aim of the devil in John 10 and verse 10. That's his uh, strategy, kill, steal and destroy. And he does it through presenting to us doors, temptations. These doors are invisible to the natural eye, but they're real. They're real doors. And we need to pray the Lord's Prayer in Luke eleven four. Lead us not into temptation. Now, younger generations are growing up now in an increasingly promiscuous culture where sex and drugs and immoral behaviour are the norm. And usually for young people, when they go away to college or they do a training, they're away from home, usually the temptations are overwhelming and they go with the flow what everybody else is doing and most people by midlife have had several sexual partners and have tried soft drugs and look upon such behavior as normal and it's probably is normal in the culture only those who are willing to leave the broad way leave that way that broad way that leads to destruction and seek the narrow way that leads to life that's in matthew 7 13 and 14 only those that will leave the broad way seek the narrow way, will avoid what most people experience in life. Regular accidents, struggles, trying to keep enough money together to live and possibly an early death. Will you follow some of the guidelines I'm teaching in these videos to guide you away from such consequences and find joyful fulfillment? You're not going to find it in New Age or Eastern religions. You will only find it in Jesus. He is the way, the truth and the life, John 14, 6. Let me introduce you to a friend.